Good morning. Very nice to see you both. But Rafe, you, you are a child of empire. And my friend, I mean, you're from Kenyan Indian descent. Um, and you think and you're proud of that and you think that was a good thing. Absolutely. I mean, look, we have to speak facts here. Colonialism and capitalism together lifted more people out of poverty in the world than, than any other two forms that we have here. Oh, wow. Wherever you go in the world, particularly British colonialism, every region of the world, the most successful, the most democratic, and usually the richest countries are those that have a former colonial British inheritance. That applies to the Americas, South America, Africa, Asia, and elsewhere. And there's a reason that Canada, Australia, and New Zealand always rank amongst the 10 best countries in which to live, and that's because of their colonial inheritance. A lot of people ain't happy about that. You know, the army, the military, the schools, universities, hospitals, the infrastructure of government, the civil service, all of that is due to the British inheritance. And you know, if you look around the world, it's impossible to say that the countries of Africa and Asia and elsewhere would have had the evolution towards democratic legislatures and stable countries were it not for colonialization. Well, it's an interesting statement. It's a brave statement. Narinda is, uh, there's steam coming out of her ears. There as, really is. I mean, Rafe, you sound quite mad. I mean, I don't know where you get your facts from. No, for Talk, history books, you should try no, to read one no, once you're in a not, while. I don't know which history books you're reading, but they're not <laughs> correct, because you're talking about benefits to who? Self-indigenous people and people who were colonised, actually I call colonisation genocide. Let's speak facts. Your facts are actually British colonisation genocide killed... Genocide is a very killed, difficult let me world. I let, you, to... I let you speak. Killed hundreds of millions of people. It's murder. There's a legal right. liability here. They killed hundreds of millions of people colonizing the world. And actually, I don't like this argument, Eamon, yeah. that actually it was in the past, because you said that in the break, that actually it's in the past, let it go. The ramifications of colonization are still felt today. Aboriginal people are still the poorest in health, education, and Aboriginal teenager is more well, likely I'll to go to you. prison I'll than university. I'll tell you what I think. That's I mean, it's very, it's, very, it's very controversial. I mean, I'm from Ireland, and, um, you know, uh, colonization there, we still live with today. It's not, I totally understand her into your, your argument there, but part of me says, look ahead, stop looking back. We can't change the How past. How can you look ahead when you're still suffering? I have one eye, I look ahead. I had no mom at six years old, I look ahead. I was one of the few black kids at a white school and I look ahead. I got a scholarship to live 11 hours away from a native country to learn something totally new all alone, didn't know how to cook and I looked ahead. I had no help in that foreign country so when I was sick I still had to help myself, I looked ahead. You are from Indian descent, the infrastructure allows you to speak about feminism and social justice and you're not happy? What's wrong with you? You can't look ahead, you got two eyes. I mean you got a choice, do you want to suffer right now after the colonialism or you want to suffer in certain countries that never had colonialism? Sp uh, uh, slave people who were former slaves, their, their families are still suffering. No one is people suffering from colonialism. Poor. Come yes, on, Narinda. They are. You're spouting you nonsense. Your Firstly, Race hundreds of millions of people. Hundreds uh, of millions of people please. were murdered. <laughs> Rafe, right. you don't know your facts, and I feel sorry for okay. you. My country was under the colonialism of the Dutch people. Was it good? It wasn't the best. There was even a revolt with slavery and everything with Kun, not Kunta Kinte, but Tuka, I believe. My bad, it was Tula. The fact that the Dutch people were on our island compared to all the other caribbean islands we have such a unique infrastructure that you cannot even compare it to all the other countries am i happy the bad things happen no i am not i'm just grateful i can look forward i'm just grateful i get opportunity from the enemy that you keep telling me to point a finger and keep reminding them they're bad people and they're still the enemy do it then explain to me why the millions that was growing was so low in the beginning of the 1800s. How is it possible they never grew, but when the UK came and they left, for some odd reason they left the infrastructure that helped them die or helped them grow? That's racist. Everything you said may well be true, but Narinda basically saying, it wasn't worth the price that was paid. Well, it's absolute nonsense. Firstly, there's no... Bit, there's, excuse me, it's now price. my turn to speak. Thanks so much. Uh, hundreds of millions of people did not die underneath the British Empire. Yes, That's they a complete did. nonsense. Also, life expectancy for Aborigines for thousands of years had been 40 years of age. You know, they were a Stone Age, Paleolithic culture when the British arrived there. So they, they now have life expectancies of 70 years, 30 years longer. No, that's not longer. correct either. I, I'm sorry, I'm giving you the absolute fact here. Their life expectancy is decades less than white Australia. The and there are many, there are many reasons for that, but it's not due to colonialism. But in all honesty, most of these people would say, we need to stop fossil fuel because it's global warming. But wait! Go tell them people, 
you fossil fuel are living around 70 and you're like now go back to 30 because you're saving the planet <laughs> You serious? Yeah, abridging the people, you might die quicker, so it's the white people's fault. Colonialism, they, the, their life expectancy increased by 30 years in 200 years. No. After tens of thousands you of years, it was 40 years. I'm terribly sorry, but you need to go back no, and do Ray, some you research. No, you don't know your facts, because actually, <laughs> colonization or genocide has put Australian South so the, Indigenous the, the, people behind hundreds of years. Everywhere you go. Colonization put Indians <clears throat> back hundreds of years. You're not right in anything. Uh, excuse me, and actually, under the Raj, say, the British population... You can't actually say <laughs> All right. that Narendra. because British and made some trains and we did this and we did yeah. that. We did great. You did it for your own benefit. The Indian the population. Thing, uh -huh. The only <clears> thing <throat> that benefited colonization was the British their pockets. You lined your pockets Narendra, on I, the I, backs of sorry, can I, just make one Narendra, I will guess that the general audience that's listening and watching us uh, today will will respect what both of you are saying, but they'll say you're losing the argument because he seems very calm about this and you rightly Probably, so you're, you're inflamed about this, aren't you? Because people died at the hands of British government and the British monarchy. All right, How I'm sorry, can I just interject that? here? Let me finish now. Well, okay. you spoke people quite a while. died, okay. Eamon. Right. Thousands, hundreds of millions of people died. Okay, How under, do you the, respond in, to under that? the Indian Raj, the population of India increased from 170 million to 450 million. million died in the Bengal famine. The, the, the oh. whole cyclical famines of India ended because of British storage oh, my techniques. <laughs> So funny. And manu Ray, malnutrition you're a liar. projects. You're actually lying uh, well, about your that's, fact that's, that's Well, I'd love to have a longer discussion no. where I can expose the, the nonsense that you're no, spouting you're, here. You're also, the British TV. advanced women's rights in India. The history of women in, in India is one of oppression. The British banned sooty, the burning of widows on the funeral pyres. The British uh, uh, stopped the infanticide of girls. And the British allowed Hindu women you to remarry. You killed in 1919. Right? You shot you dead. You wouldn't be here Children enjoying the, the lifestyle you are were it not for the, the Britain's so great advances for women. <laughs> Two points for Quinn. Big Quinn. And I'm so terribly sorry. Ray, what you're saying is because Britain, the great British Empire, we went there and we advanced social justices and all that. Therefore, I'm lucky. I'm not lucky if my ancestors were murdered at the hands Your of the ancestors are also my ancestors. We, we're both we Sikhs, all right? Therefore. So don't speak as if you have if we complete murdered, domain I'm over this. I'm not lucky. All right? I'm not lucky. No, no, no. No, he needs to know. Okay. He's always crying. You are Indian absolutely people, lucky. <laughs> Aboriginal people are not lucky because of British colonization. British colonization was genocide. I'm saying as and a woman, as an Indian woman, you are lucky because I'm of colonization, lucky. because I'm your life would not I'm be as... I'm in a country where I face racism. I could have been back home and actually India could have been richer. Indi Thankfully we are richer now. Thankfully, In India is one of the head. world's five most racist countries. I'm terribly sorry to break it to you. Slay! The guy said you have women's rights in India way more than before that the Indians kind of brought there and she's like well people got shot. I'm like okay so we shouldn't do that at all. I'm like where are you going with this point? Do you think I have racist views? I do. Name one thing I've ever said that's racist. You said one thing. I be a but black person? You yes, as a joke, because I don't believe this anyone should joke, joke around with that. Don't joke about those like that. What? <laughs> what? I, I don't believe people should joke about being something that they're not. Don't don't make a spectacle out of it. If if you're here to do a job and be professional, do that on every scale. But you don't said I have racist them. views. How dare you, you say something like that? Because of the comment that you made about five minutes ago. How is that a racist and, view? And I'm going to the president because it made me feel some type of way. How about that? Right to jail. You, wait, did, wait. Do you need a safe space? Did I trigger you? You asked the institution if I need a safe space. Wait. So you're going to the president for what reason? I was going to the president because of what you said. What did I say? Cannot be a black person. So yes, in a, se an in, in, in a sequence of questions where I said identity should not be fluid. It doesn't matter. Now it's going to be a sequence of mother complaints when I go to the president. Oh, oh yeah. Go, 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 be my guest. Come on, little Trump. Let's go, little Trump. People can identify as a different gender, age, actually these days, whatever they want. Of course, somebody's going to be like, hey, I'll identify as black because that way DEI will help me get a job. I can't get a loan, I identify as a woman. Hey, I got the money. Oh, you got a restraining order against a man? Well, I identify as a woman. The restraining order doesn't work. That happened in Spain. He can now get close to that woman. Obnoxiously on the center of campus, yeah. misguiding people about your belief in Maloney. Salchicha. Brock Wurst. And I'm exercising my right of free speech. And if I tried to stand up in Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan and do what I'm doing now, 
I'd be in prison before I knew what my name was. it's a great thing I'm an American citizen and born okay? on this soil. Good. Great thing, isn't it? All right. Now, do you, what do you take that as right there? As blindly naming Iran and Iraq and Afghanistan? Blindly? I'm not blindly at all. Besides, that's yeah. ignorant. That's an ignorant move on your part. Because I have no correlation with Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan. I didn't say you did. Then why bring it up? I'll tell you what. Random countries? Because... You, you two were challenging, but no. So every I'm time I turn irrational. into you, you cut me off. I'm not irrational. Yes, you are. You don't really want to reason and think. Because you're you just not want to emote. To reason. I'm not emotional. Oh no. I'm not emotional. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> you're telling a man that he's not allowed to speak. He's telling you the countries where he would go, and if he speak, he would get arrested. Why did you bring it up? You're talking about speaking. <laughs> Against the LGBTQ plus community. They say the no cruising and no U-turn signs were put up in the 1990s to prevent people in the gay community from meeting up with other gay people. Cruising, of course, meant something very different. Uh, it meant the, uh, uh, an opportunity for the LGBT community to try to find human connection and intimacy. I mean, if someone is always making U-turn because he keeps wants to go to McDonald's and so many accidents happen, there are always consequences. Am I being fact-phobic? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. Just need to know from a men's perspective, are you waiting on girls to talk to you first? I did. That's how I met my wife. Ta -ta. Like, are you waiting on a girl to ask you on a date first? Because that's crazy to me. Like, when you're out in public and you're making eyes with a girl and you're, like, making it known that you're attracted to her, but you're not going to say something, how are you not going to say something? Where are the huevos? Where are the huevos these days? I feel like there's so many, like, times that guys want to say something to girls and they don't. I mean, you fear a man more than a bear. So, hey, if you look at us, maybe you're looking at us because you fear us. Not that at all. No, no, no. Also, we are respecting something that you said over and over and over and over. So officially, we're being very, very, very respectful. See, ladies approaching a man does work. What? Take this. Give the 15 give me Put it back wherever it is. I can, I can if you don't see, I'm going to throw this on you. Uh, you want me to throw this on you? You want me to? You are pushing it. Get in your fucking car, take your coffee, and leave. Give me, give me the water. Dumb uh, fucking bitch. Bikini Barista takes out a hammer on customer's car after he threw drinks on her in South Seattle. The incident happened at the Taste of Heaven Espresso in Seattle which is owned by a 23-year-old Emily. The argument happened after the man started complaining about the 22 price tag on his 32-ounce coffee in 24-ounce water. Lee spoke out about the incident on Instagram. Woman, work alone in the industry, wearing nearly nothing and interacting with men, most of which we don't know all day. Okay, the majority of people we meet throughout our shift are kind, respectful, overly amazing humans. Okay, however, on occasion we see the ones that think that it's appropriate to get violent both verbally and physically. This wasn't his first time being aggressive, but it was the first time he ever gotten physically violent with me. He had gotten what he had paid for and he was mad about the price. Dumb fucking bitch. Are you waiting on girls to talk to you first? Um, I think he's mad that he can't be with you, but that's just me. But you didn't have to hit him with a hammer. You already won the freaking battle. He paid for coffee for that price. Don't get me wrong, my boss at it a bong. Put the fire na me blonde, kush hash purple skunk, creo yo colombici jam jam, dur loketa verdetta welcome.